Yep. We're back. Well, have you fellers or fellets ever went hunting before? I mean, I have. Let me know what what you use. You go archery or maybe use rifle. Or you can use your moss to tribute. I mean, they all kind of work, I guess. I mean, it's dead. And um, they kind of, you know, there's a little dent in the car. I don't know if you can see it because it's not really like, you know, the hood. It's not like here. It's more so, I mean, even right here is okay. It's like right about here ish and there was a little dent that happened and uh yeah now i gotta fix it great great i am so excited for this one it is cold all right ladies and gentlemen welcome back so, looking at this thing, the, the the worst part about it is that it's cold outside, and I still have to do this because I'm a nice guy. I don't know. This is a friend of mine, really good friend. They uh, they uh, you know, were passing a semi at fully legal speeds, and a deer jumped out in broad daylight, and kind of they they hit it, you know, like right here ish, and I mean. Every single cooler on this car is completely smashed. Um, looks like it might have pushed this top breed eater bracket just a little bit, but it completely crushed this guy and bent this one in a decent amount still too. Obviously, he's gonna need new headlights and a whole new bumper if he wants. I'm gonna kind of do this the budget way with as many zip ties and the least amount of part replacement as I can. But it still needs to be a structurally safe and sound car, and I just. Everything beyond that is up to him on what he wants because when you're young and, you know, you don't want to spend your money on, you know, stuff you don't need, especially an AC condenser and all that stuff. It's winter in Pennsylvania. It gets cold, so we don't need the AC. And um, so I'm going to just do as much as he wants me to. And, of course, one thing that sets me off is hazy headlights. <clears throat> See hazy headlights? got to do something about it so i'm gonna at least clean this one up completely make it shine good again and this one's gonna be replaced anyway so i don't have to worry about that too much let's see like the bulb survived though so that's a bonus that saved me like 97 cents um it's friday night i think he hit the deer two days ago just got it here by a trailer it's leaking an immense amount of transmission fluid so can't drive it and you know there's a little bit of a coolant leak somewhere so I have to find that, but I want to try to get it back in in his hands. Hopefully, if if I buy everything in store and they have it in stock by the end of the weekend, but I don't know if that'll actually happen. So we'll play it by ear and see what happens. Welcome back to the Antique Geek Garage. Now, like I kind of mentioned, this is for a friend, so I'm gonna try to keep costs down. I just actually got off the phone with. My AutoZone store nearby. They quoted me at two hundred and nineteen dollars for the radiator and one hundred and sixty-six dollars for the fans. It's just those two items that were up, what? Almost, almost four hundred dollars, probably about four hundred after tax and whatnot. And um, we got a lot more stuff to buy, so we're probably gonna order off Rock Auto and see what prices are there. I will tell you the prices of everything, so that you kind of can see and. That's including kind of, you know, all the things I have in stock. Like, this turns in a ball was obliterated. I just put that in because I have one in stock. So, put that in. It's good to go. Um, I'm just going to start just kind of tearing this down, basically. So, I'm just going to put it on time lapse because it's going to be pretty boring, quite honestly. And, like I said, I'm just going to pull everything off and then... Once it's all off, then I'll kind of go over the full damage because this bar, our pop radiator support bar, is just a little bit curved in. Um, in our inner fender area, there seems to be like there's a guard back there. It's kind of hard to tell. I just did a really quick overview. That's kind of messed up. This headlight bracket switch thing, broken. I can probably make one. That's fine. We don't need that. That's fine. We're going to need our... Uh, See, I don't know the fancy names for all this stuff. It's our radiator cross support guard. 
And then this is like heavy duty metal and it's bent back pretty far. So I'm not only gonna have a hard time moving that, but I hope that it didn't cause any major frame bending because I don't want it to have pulled the frame in because you think if it kinked in the middle, it made this distance from here to here shorter and might have pulled this in a little bit. So I gotta make sure that's all okay. And then we'll start getting to making it run and drive again. And then from there, what does he want to make it look decent again? Because, I mean, if he, if he buys a new bumper, even from Rock Auto, you're paying like $190 is what I believe these are running at. And $190 for a prime bumper. So I'm still, I'd just spray paint it if you wanted. It'd be pretty cheap, but stuff like that. And I just need to consider all of this and... Cause I do like to make my stuff look pretty nice, but if, if he doesn't want to pay for the fancy looking stuff, that's completely understandable. I don't blame him. So we're just going to do what he needs and wants. Um, like I said, I'm going to time lapse just tearing it down. Um, it looks like for all of this stuff, I'm just going to start cutting it. I got my little grinder out for my compressor. I'm just going to cut all of this stuff here away so I can get to these bolts. Cause these should line up with the uh, nuts and the nut is like here for this one. So this got moved back real good. So I have to cut all that off. And bit by bit, we'll kind of get this tore down, pulled apart, and then piece by piece, start putting it back together. Like I said, though, it seems like I'm going to order everything online. So if I can get everything off tonight, especially all the big major stuff um, that is expensive and it's nice to get, you know, for a good price, if I can get all that stuff off tonight and then I can order everything tonight, and then since today's Friday, it probably won't be till Monday if I'm lucky, maybe Tuesday. And then I'll start throwing everything back into here. And um, that way we can get it back to him in a short time frame uh, as opposed to waiting weeks uh, for like a shop to get to this. So it's also going to save a lot of money by having me do it because I'm not going to try to hardly anything. I understand. You know, this stuff happens. And uh, we, not everybody's rich, especially not me. So I'm going to help him out and... I'll get all this done and uh, might as well record it for you guys and I'll give you all of the tips that I can for if this happens to your car, where can you save money, what can you buy, what can you do. So uh, let's get into it. Let's just dig in. Yeah! fender got really pushed in and all of this here needs to come back out for the headlight even to be able to sit in here so i'm going to try to tackle that right now i'm probably going to leave everything attached and i'm just going to kind of slowly try to work this by hand by the way it's the next day i was out till late last night and i got all this taken off i'll go over that here in a second but we're going to fix this immediately until we get parts and then we have to really dig into this engine because uh, I have to show you something. Anyway, I'm going to see if this can pull out by hand. I would say it's always a good place to start. Because if you can pull it out by hand, that'll save you a lot of, you know, new dents or anything like that. Let's see if I can... There we go. It's already looking a lot better. my way still okay so you get a little hammer and try to tap that in a little bit right there so this little hammer i speak of does not exist i'm gonna try a mallet but it's probably too soft to do anything Just leave that like that until we get the new headlight, and then we'll see kind of where everything needs to line up. There's a bolt here that definitely held the headlight in. Other than that, though, everything else seems to be okay-ish. The inner fender is a little bit bent up, but 
once we get a new bumper in here, we'll be able to secure this out and keep that looking good. Doing inner fender things. But, i got to show you something on the engine. So, I'm looking down here. First glance, I thought this was the power steering pump. I was like, man, that's a lot of power steering fluid. Well, that's the AC compressor right there. Um, that's, this right here is a power steering pump. I was like, man, there's still stuff above it. And then I caught a glimpse of, you know, valve cover. That's actually cast. At first I thought that was plastic. That's like a cast aluminum is what it's looking like. Yeah, that's definitely aluminum. So it's a cast aluminum and it just broke straight through it. So I got to pull a good bit of stuff off the top of this engine now. And we need a valve cover for this side. Or I can patch this one up. Um, it's, being that it's cast aluminum, I might patch it up for him because it'll be way cheaper, I'm assuming. But I don't want to, so we'll just kind of see. But I gotta start taking the top of the engine off so we can get that figured out because that is going to be a big thing to stop us. <sighs> so in case you didn't, ouch! So in case you didn't know, you need your valve cover because uh, she holds a lot of important oil, and that oil. You're gonna lock up your motor. So it's kind of an important thing to have. And it's something that we currently don't have. So we're gonna take this down and figure that out. Looks like we just gotta take off this plastic cover and then there should be, I don't know, let me take guess six bolts that hold on our valve cover itself. And then I'll kind of try to find out. I looked on Rock Auto last night I mean, we're looking around $700 right now to get necessity parts. So that's not including air conditioning and all the other fun stuff that's not required, but you know, it's nice to have. It's mostly because of the shipping. Shipping right now was at like $200, and that's from only three warehouses. So one of them was like $155 from one warehouse. So, I mean, I tried the warehouse trick on Rock Auto, but... That's just going to be a lot of freaking money. So I'm going to call up some junkyards and see what I can find. Because it's looking like that's going to be the best, cheapest, and practical option. Is to just go to a junkyard that has one of these for parts. So that's what I'm going to do. We'll I'll never see that again, basically. Well, my camera definitely did not just face plant onto a concrete floor. So that was awesome. That would suck if that ever happened. Oh, come on. Aha! Wham, 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 wham. Looks like it's a cruise control car. That's cool. So, hmm. Of course, they got electrical digital wires on everything nowadays. Jeez Louise. I guess I'm just gonna start by taking these uh, coil, this is the coils off, just singular, not coil packs, is what I was gonna say. I'm gonna start by taking off these coils. Um, we'll set these aside. Also need to mark which one is one, two, and trace. Um, from left to right, so I better do that before I forget. So whenever you're working on aluminium, usually, this is a weird case, it'll just crack and break, like, break off. Usually you can get steel to bend, this stuff usually cracks and breaks off. But aluminum, on the other hand, from my experiences, is just broke. So, seeing that this kind of just bent in, I might be able to just kind of push this back together. Maybe even get it welded, and that will definitely keep this from leaking any oil, which is going to be the biggest thing. Being this literally is going to be probably very well coated with oil on the inside of it. It's going to be hard to get any quick steel or GB weld to fully adhere to it, um, even with you know an extreme amount of cleaning. It's going to be hard, so we're going to kind of see what we can do to try to get that fixed. So I think I actually got all of them. But we'll see. Oh.
So now I can kind of show you right in here. That's our big break. And I mean, she didn't run hardly at all since that happened. It just does still have like almost full oil in it. And uh, it leaked out a good bit. I mean, it's poured all the way down here. Sucker is going. And it's got a fram. Oh, fram. I don't know. I'm worried about his uh, trustiness is things. Anyway. Let's get this. I don't know about welding aluminum, actually. I'll get back to you guys on that, because I just... It's something that I plain old simply don't know the answer to. So I had to do my research on it, figure it out, and I'll let you guys know as well. And uh, in the meantime, I'll get this cleaned up and ready to go. and Probably wire brush it while we have it off. Wire brush it, make it shiny, then I'll put a clear coat on it so it doesn't corrode again. So I'll do that right away. And yeah, that's one step down. Only about six million to go. Yes. All right, so I got this wire brushed. It's cleaned up a little bit. I didn't go the whole way cleaning it, only because I'm not 100% sure this is going to be the fix I do. Um, but if it is going to be the fix, I'm gonna use something over here, uh, like steel stick or, uh, you know, just a regular like JB Weld type item. But I'm not 100% sure what's going to be put on the car yet. Um, and if I do go to a junkyard and get a parts one, I'm probably going to swap this one on with a quick steel. So that it, unless it has a bad engine already, then I don't really have to worry about that. But unfortunately, this is kind of going to be where we put it on hold till Monday. All the junkyards are closed and they won't be open till Monday. And that's when I'm going to call them and see if I can get the front end for this car. Um, I'll go out there and take it off myself if they will let me, and if it saves me some money or saves him some money in turn. I will go out there and I'll take all the stuff off and I'll bring you guys along for that as well because we need a, you know, a whole bumper and everything. And even though the cars that I looked at were red and gray, um, I think my spray painting skills are good enough to where, I mean, it's, it's a metallic blue, but it's not very metallic-y, so even a gloss, a really glossy with a metallic base coat might work out pretty well just with some like rattle can stuff i'll probably have to get a close sample though and i'll make it look pretty good still and i want to make it look like it did not hit a deer and i think i can do that on a really good budget so i'll bring you guys along on that on monday but until that happens this is kind of where i'm going to stop it's probably going to be in the same video though so i'll catch you guys probably late monday night after a junkyard run hopefully or i order some parts so we'll see all of you in this car then well it is just past nine o'clock wednesday evening like i said got the parts this was actually i thought it was gonna be shorter drive but it took two hours and 26 minutes each way so i i came i got out from school half hour early and drove the hoy there Got the parts, came the whole way back. It's just past nine o'clock right now. Um, and I told him I'd have his car done tonight. So got to get all these put back in. Unfortunately, I did not get one of these, these uh, crush bars. I'm gonna put it back together for now. And I'm gonna tell him that we can just order one and within three or four days, it'll come in. I'll just have to pull that bumper off, throw it on real quick. It'll be a nice, simple job. Um, because he needs this car tomorrow. So even though it's not ideally safe and I would not recommend you do this, uh, he does need this car for work. So it's got to happen. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to kind of just time lapse me getting like some of the, the hardware for the old bumper and everything cut off. I didn't finish all that. And then I'll kind of video of, you know, setting it all up and putting it all back together. And uh, yeah, might as well jump right into it.
we got the radiator put back on the power steering line is refastened it's kind of bent up but it has no kinks in it it's almost kink but it's not got the transmission cooler zip tied in because those mounts are so broken that i'm not going to get them back on so every, it just needs the front bumper i fixed the headlight clip over there put some coolant in it i mean there's fluid everywhere but i don't see anything dripping out of it it's just because it's been leaking from sitting and the transmission cooler's on i poured a little bit of transmission fluid in so we don't you know burn up our transmission but i'm gonna let it run and stuff before uh I really get to check that. It technically should be hot in park. Um, now the transmission really isn't gonna get hot unless it's being driven around a little bit. And I'm gonna take it just for a simple test drive. So I'll get it at least extremely close to being completely perfectly topped off. And that way we don't burn out our transmission. Is the big thing for at least sitting. All right, batteries back up. Okay, we got both headlights working. That's good. So you got high beams. Good. Alright, fire it up. Transmission fluid just poured out of that sucker. What happened? Oh no, that's a lot of transmission fluid. That was very expensive. Where did it come from? Man, that is a lot of transmission fluid. We still found a way to catch that, because that's, whew, that's going to be, wow. Basically, I'm going to wipe out on the garage floor like nine times because of this now. So that's great. Just set that there, kind of block it. Go any further down. Take two. Halfway up our checker, because you think when it gets hot it expands. So I'm gonna get about halfway up our checkers, take it for the test drive, check it again, add or leave it depending on you know how much it is.
All right. So I have the test drive. I'm just going to get her bumper turned on. There we are, ladies and gentlemen. That is the, I think this was in total 300. In fact, I have a receipt here. $392. Or three, yeah, $392. Oh, focus. Come on. And 20 in parts, and then I barely made anything off doing this. So I'll leave his receipt in here. I gotta get this over to him. It is currently 11.24. My phone is like 100% about to die. So I gotta get this thing back and I will kind of film a little bit tomorrow for the final kind of breakdown of everything. And uh, thank you guys for watching and I'll uh, catch you guys in uh, probably tomorrow morning. All right, so it's been Two days i have a new car in the garage this is like a personal vehicle had a flat tire patch that but it's late at night i kind of just want to go in nope that's not the receipt i got the mazda completely done in two days of working um he got an amazing deal as far as paying me for labor goes i'm talking like crazy deal <laughs> the amount of labor that I did and but I was helping out a friend and so hopefully you guys can like this video I know it was kind of a rushed one it was a little bit of a lot of time a little bit of a lot of time lapse but that's kind of just because well I mean it's a customer's car and I had to get it done ASAP if I had more time I would have filmed a little bit more and thorough but I bought every part from a junkyard and that saved him quite literally hundreds of dollars his total bill for that entire project that you saw there was $492, I think. Yeah, no, he he gave me a $20 bonus because I finished it that night. And so that brings it up to, what, $512? So $512 to do all of that repair. And that was in the span of five days. And most of those days were because the junkyard was closed and I couldn't get there. So now that I know schedules and times and if I call in a day earlier, you know, the parts will be ready earlier and so forth. So I can get it down to probably a three-day process is my goal. So like I said, kind of I'm sorry. I'm going to apologize formally. I don't even have a real microphone yet. Like I'm just doing the best quality content I can, but it's not perfect by any means. The microphone will be coming soon. That should really improve the quality like tremendously. So don't worry, that's happening. And yeah, that was the episode of the Mazda start to finish. It was kind of a quick job, but it was a budget, save him money and it got it back on the road safely. So that's it for this one. I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Hopefully coming up here soon. I might be pulling out. Today's Friday night. I might be pulling out the engine 
starting tomorrow. I work in the morning and I work in the evening, but a little bit of time in the middle and late at night, I might have some time to start getting that out, but we'll see. It's going to be kind of a very play it by ear type thing. So if not, we'll be bringing the dirt bike in and we'll uh, get that ready. So thank you for one last ride before it gets way too cold. Like it's, it's like 50 something, maybe 49 or something right now. It's a decent temperature and wearing a short sleeve because I don't want to get my sweater dirty. It's a little chilly, but you might get one more ride in this season before I got to put everything away. And I have not rid this dirt bike since my big wreck. So stay tuned for that episode and um, I'll catch you guys then. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. And don't be afraid to subscribe, like, and share this to your friends. And uh, thank you. Thank you. I mean, that's all I can say is thank you. You guys are awesome. For the one person that will see this. Catch you guys in the next one.